Hi everybody, I am Lady Stars and Fire. Now, if you've heard of me before, you're used to me putting out what I call the weekly healing messages, the weekly healing reading, each week. This, this is not that video. I don't come out with videos like what I'm about to do very often because I don't do it until I know I know that I have to, that it's something that I have to do. See, I'm an indigo. Now, some of us are indigos and we're just now awakening to being it, to realizing we have always been one. We just weren't awake. And some indigos have been awake the whole time. It's just the way that it happens to work. The thing is, for indigos, their biggest project for why, why we were set back here, why we are here, our reason for being is to try to make things better, is to start to point out areas that we see that are wrong and need help. And that's what this video is about today. See, because I happen to be an indigo that pretty much solely works in soul healing. Healing of some form or another. And this would be why it's the area that I am going into. You see, the last few days, for me, it has been very difficult emotionally because I'm an empath also. And it's been very emotional because I've had spirit going, look at that. Notice that. Write that down. Pay attention. Notice it. And it's been things that have been hurting me. But there was a reason. And I didn't get it until now. You see, and that's why I'm coming out. Because, man, we need to talk. We need to talk. We are having a communication breakdown within this world. Within ourselves. That we are unaware of. We're just simply unaware of it. And it starts out small. Really, really small. And it grows. And it grows into massive amounts of power even. We are spiritually constipated. Plain and simple, we are being spiritually blocked for many of us. Society, the human race, is having problems because it is spiritually blocked, spiritually constipated in areas that they are unaware of because we've allowed ourselves to believe it's acceptable. Because we've lived in an area where it's been so negative for so long that that is normal. And that is not acceptable. It's that simple. You see, some of the very best things that was tried to be made actually turned out to be the worst things made with the best of intentions. And some of those things could be so very good. They could be so very good, but we in our human self, allowing us to not be aware of the negativities, simply are making it a terrible, terrible thing. It's that simple. Because we're not aware to know, to have heart and compassion. We laugh at things that are not funny in any way, shape, or form. We are unaware of what is and what is not acceptable. We allow things that are not acceptable to be acceptable. Like I said, this is a communication breakdown that we are blocked in. When I say we are spiritually constipated, we are spiritually blocked, I mean in here. I mean of our heart, of our soul. Yes, you have those of us who have awakened and we are trying to, you know, find the way, find our light, and do the best that we can. We are trying to live our purpose. But we also are human, and we get sidetracked. That's normal, unfortunately, because we are human. We have ego standing in the way, and that would be that negative areas. We have a problem with communication. You know why? Because we don't communicate. We don't. We don't speak to one another anymore. We live in emails. We live on our phones. We live in media. We live in text messaging, pictures, and videos. 
Hey, they're still working on me. I'm, I'm on a video right now. Some of these things are very good things. And that's a wonderful thing. But some of these things are so simply overlooked because it's acceptable. We don't live with our heart and our compassion leading the way anymore because what has become acceptable is not acceptable and we don't even notice it. We overlook it. We just let it slide. When in Rome, do as the Romans do. You see, the other day, I was sitting outside smoking a cigarette at my work. No big deal. Yes, I smoke and it's a bad habit. I know that. I said they still working on me. But, <laughs> I was sitting outside and smoking a cigarette with my girlfriend and there's a couple other people sitting there all talking, having a nice conversation. No big deal. When one of them pulls out his phone and he's watching videos. He's watching YouTube. YouTube can be a great thing. And it can be such a horrible thing. He says, he starts laughing, and I can hear in the background, fighting. And he's laughing. And he says that what he's watching is summer fights. You hear chicks in the background, screaming and yelling and smacking each other. And he finds it funny. When in Rome, do as the Romans do. We have not changed any from the Colosseum days. When we watch them fight to the death. When we find it funny. It's acceptable. We now put it on YouTube. We now put it out for people to see and laugh at at a larger, broader level. And it's acceptable. We find it funny. It's not funny. But we, as humans, we've come to accept this in life. This is not acceptable. You have to be a mentor. You have to invest in the people and in yourself as to what is acceptable to you and what is acceptable to your children to grow up into. It's that simple, honey. I am a wholeheartedly, I believe in freedom of speech. I believe in being you, being the authentic person that is you. But along with that also comes negativity too. Everything has two sides. Everything plays two sides. That's the ego of life. And you have to be aware as to what side you are accepting and being part of. Music. Music can be such a wonderful thing. Such an uplifting thing. But not when every other word is ho. I'm sorry. I can't have children. I can't have children. And I'm accepting to that. But I don't want you, honey, I don't want you to have to have your child grow up to where a hoe and being a whore and a slut and a bitch is such an acceptable thing that she thinks it's acceptable. Gentlemen, some of you have daughters. Do you want your daughter to grow up and be considered a whore? Do you want her to accept it and that's just a normal thing? It's nothing different than calling you sweetie. Is that what you are accepting in this world? Dating for crying out loud. It's not even dating. We talk to people we don't know on social media. And of course, the world has changed. This is how we meet people. Okay, that's fine. But let me tell you, how many times have I opened up a message and I got to see your junk? I'm tired of seeing your junk. I want to talk to you. I want to know who you are, not your junk. It's that simple. Why do we do this? This is not acceptable. But it's become acceptable because we've allowed it to be. That's wrong. It's wrong. Why are we allowing such negative situations and ill will to take place in our life? See, I was telling somebody this the other day as I was starting to record all of these things that are being brought to my attention because Spirit keeps going, look, listen, pay attention, write it down, look, listen, pay attention, write it down. And I was like, oh, because they were just pointing it out to me. But that's because I'm an indigo. I am meant to come out here, put my foot down and go, no. This is not acceptable. 
that's part of what I have to do. Or it drives me crazy because they're going to come to me and make sure I see these things. And I don't want you to have to have children who grow up in a belligerent world because we find it acceptable and we've forgotten to come from compassion and heart. It's that simple. Somebody told me the other day, but Shell, Shell, you're only one person. You know, that pissed me off. It's very simple. Yeah, I am one person. So was Shakespeare. So was Einstein. So was Tesla. So was Martin Luther King. So was Buddha. And so was Jesus. He was one person. Each one of them was one person who have changed this world in some way or another. Guess what? I am a force that will be reckoned with. Or you will not be willing to reckon with. It's that simple. And you know why? So are you. You have the power to be that same force. And this is why from the moment you were conceived, the moment you were thought of, the moment that that spark of life came into you, the moment that God, the creator, the universe, whatever it is that you want to see it as, whatever it is that is considered God, brought you into life, breathed, breathed that very spark of life into that being of this physical world, you were able to become that force to be reckoned with. Because, honey, that spark of God is in you. At this point, I will nil and void every negative and ill will that comes my way. I will not accept it. And you know why I will not accept it? God is not out there. Look all you want. God is not out there. And you know why you're not going to find him out there? He's in here, honey. God is in here. He gave you that spark. He is such a big creator, being, whatever universal energy, whatever it is that that is, that is God. It ain't out there because it's everywhere. But that one specific spark was yours and it was given to you. He's not going to be found out there because you've got to find him in here first. And if you can't find him in here, then how are you ever going to be that one person who is able to change even the little bits within your world? That is what's important to understand, honey. One person can do anything if that one person is willing to work hard enough for it and to not give up and to thrive at it and have drive for it. He's still working on me too. I'm far from perfect. I make mistakes all the time. I laugh at people when they injure themselves. I'm sorry. I don't mean to, but sometimes... They look funny. It's that simple. I know it's wrong. But I'm aware that I'm narcissistic from time to time. So are all of us. We are all narcissistic from time to time. The difference between being a narcissist and not is knowing and noticing it and being aware to try to correct it. Versus being unaware and going on with your la 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 life like you're perfect. It's that simple. Everybody's poop stinks. That's why we all have our moments. That's ego, baby. And this is part of learning how to make ego back down. I am a force that will be reckoned with. I will not accept ill will in my life. And you know how? All of us are this way. But the problem is we make mistakes. We get aggressive. We get angry. We become belligerent. But we don't become assertive. You have to learn. None of that has to be done. You just have to put your foot down and stand up for yourself and say, no, this is not how it's done. And once you start doing it for you, then you start teaching your children. You start being the parents you're supposed to be. You start being the mentor you're supposed to be. You start being the teacher you're supposed to be. And you start finding God is in you. I don't have to accept anything that is negative in my life. Now, negative things are going to happen, yes. But I don't have to sit in my shit about it. I can accept things have happened, find a positive way around it, move through it, 
and find a blessing in the disguise throughout it. But I don't have to accept people treating me poorly. I don't have to accept somebody else being treated poorly. Poorly. This is what I'm talking about. Standing up and doing what's right. And when we notice things are wrong. And people are being treated bad. Standing up and saying, I will not take this anymore. You see, I said it starts small. It starts small, but it's not. You have to invest in others. You have to invest in others. Not just yourself. Because what is it that they say? A king and his kingdom. With privilege comes responsibility and duty. Your life, you are the king within your life. I don't care who you are. You are that king within your life. But only you can decide what is acceptable within your kingdom. That's where it starts with our own selves and our own family. But it grows into all of those people in power who have forgotten this. They have forgotten that you're supposed to be the protector. A king is supposed to be a protector of his kingdom. What makes a good king, a good leader, a good mentor in our life, whether they are of power, such as your job, all the way up to the President of the United States or any other country. Whoever is in power, they seem to forget this, not all of them, but a lot of them have and they need to be reminded that a good king, a good mentor, a good leader cares about his kingdom has compassion for their kingdom, for whatever it is that they have power over. And we have too many out there who have become into power who are just taking advantage of people and who are just looking for the bottom line and money. Being a good king is not about the bottom line. It is about your four, your emotionally, your mentally, your spiritually, and your physical. Your mental, your physical, your spiritual, and physical. And emotional. I knew I was messing that up. But out of those four, you are supposed to take care of your kingdom. That's what makes a good king. A good king of whatever it is that has power over your life. Maybe it's your job. Maybe it's things you're being pushed into along those lines. They are supposed to be of love, of protecting, of guiding of us. It's that simple. A good king, a good leader, a good mentor cares about you. About you emotionally, spiritually, physically, and mentally. And if they don't, they're not coming from a loving aspect. They're not coming from a protective aspect. And they're not coming from a guided aspect. To guide you properly. Because a good king, a good person in power wants us to move forward in a healthy manner. It's not just about money and the bottom line. It's not. See, this upsets me because they see it too often. It's gone so high up that they don't give a damn about you. Some places do, but those who don't, we get pushed around and we take it. And you know why we take it? Because we need money. No. I will not be told that I cannot have my days off. I will not be told that you run my life. Wrong. You're a job. This is my life. That is the difference. I work for you. Yes. But when we allow people to push us around, they're going to keep pushing us around until we learn to push back. But you can push back assertively, not belligerently. There's a difference. I can put my foot down and say, this is not acceptable in my life, and I don't have to take this from you. And this is what we need to learn. We need to learn how to tell our children what's right and what's wrong. Teach them when they are bringing themselves into areas of negativity that we find acceptable. That is not. If we don't start from within, if we don't create the kingdom within our life and the society that we want, if we don't work for the best healthy 
kingdom within our life and the world in general, well, then you will be stuck. You will be stuck at the bottom line with what is an ignorant and belligerent kingdom. Is that acceptable? Because you have so much of that already going on. This is what we need to make the change on. It's that simple, honey. I don't want to see you have to let your children be raised in such a negative form that we find acceptable because it's the way we've been brought up. The whole reason is change it. Stand up for yourself. God is in here. He created you to be a force to be reckoned with. You don't have to take negativity and ill will and be pushed around. You don't have to. Did you know that? You don't have to. You are able to put your foot down and start to push back in a positive way without being belligerent. We need to work on this. We need to make sure that the, our, our growth as a whole unit of a world of humans get better. We've got to put love back in it, starting with our text messages, with our emails, with our communication. We need to start with talking to people, not just being in the media of one form or another. And when we are in the media, we have to remember the person on the other line, the other side is human. And they have feelings. And they don't maybe understand what you're saying. And it's not acceptable to receive pictures from people you don't know of, with their junk when you haven't even met them. I would like to know somebody. That doesn't mean I want to know your junk. Plain and simple. I want to be able to listen to music when I'm at work. I don't want to have to hear who every fucking five minutes. I said a bad word, sorry, but I don't want to have to hear it. I want us to be able to rise up. I don't want us to live a life where we're trying to do a positive thing and we contradict it with a negative, just like I just did with the bad word. The point is, we can all be better people, but we have to remember it all the time and be a mentor and work on others, not just ourselves. Because if you can't let it be good within yourself and be assertive within yourself to accept only what is good, then the next thing you know is we are going to have a kingdom that is growing of ignorance because we were too blind to see it. I love you, everybody. Hugs and kisses in the wind. And if you are waiting for my weekly healing messages. I've been with spirit all night, so I'm exhausted. I'll put them out tomorrow. Bye.